Hello and welcome to Inside Indiana Business. I'm Gary Dick coming to you this week from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and we'll be coming to you every week during the month of May with our special Business at the Brickyard series. It is a look inside the numbers, the economic impact that motorsports has on the state of Indiana. From the world's greatest race course to race teams, suppliers, vendors, dirt tracks and many others touching virtually every county in the state. How big is that impact? Well, a study released just last year pegged the impact of IMS alone at more than $1 billion to the Indiana economy. More than half of that total, $566 million, generated during the month of May last year. It is also estimated that IMS is responsible for nearly 8,500 full-time equivalent jobs statewide. And a man who knows full well about the economic impact of motorsports and the Indianapolis 500 on the Indiana economy, Indianapolis Motor Speedway, President Doug Bowles. Doug, thanks for joining me. Yeah, happy to be here. A little bit of rain, but little hopefully rain. we get rid of that, right? We'll get rid of that for the month of May. It's here. Uh, first of all, the impact. You know, we talk a lot about it. And a year ago, you unveiled a, a, an economic impact study that we just talked about, a billion dollars just from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Put into perspective how much not only this place, but motorsports in general means to the Indiana economy. It's huge for our Indiana economy. And obviously, this is the anchor tenant in Indiana in terms of the economy and helping drive it, but it's everywhere throughout our state. It's not just IndyCar racing, but it's drag racing, it's short track racing, there's some NASCAR components here. A lot of Delara's work is, in, is invested in NASCAR today. So this community, this state, really depends on motorsport for its e economic health. How, how would you sense the health of the motorsports industry? I think that motorsports industry right now is maybe healthier than it's ever been. It's, it continues to go well. Obviously, we all had to struggle through 2020, but there's this resurgence in terms of fans that come out, in terms of teams on the IndyCar side. If you look at the short tracks, you go around the state to any of the short tracks, full fields, good crowds. I think it's in good shape. One measure of uh, economic vitality uh, for this place is ticket sales. And, and we were talking before we, we came on uh, came on the air here, uh, ticket sales this year looking pretty good. Yeah, they're actually up on last year today as we stand here by 15,000 units. And that just says an awful lot about our fans. The fans for the Indianapolis 500 and the Indianapolis Motor Speedway continue to be our most passionate evangelists to make this place grow. I think Roger Penske buying it, the investment he's put into the customer experience has really made it easy for fans to say, hey, come on, friends, come on, fans. I want to introduce you to the Indianapolis 500 and the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It's been outstanding. Let's talk about that investment because it does continue here year after year. What are fans going to see uh, who come out to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway this month? What are they going to see new? So obviously, Roger bought the Speedway closed in 2020, in January 2020. He's put about $60 million in the facility since he's purchased it, most of which is in the customer experience. So this year, if you're a GA customer, you sit on one of our spectator mounds, new video boards there. We've got a new concession partner. We're going to invest in some new, some new concession areas. Areas. We've got a new kitchen in our quarterback club, our home and terrace club. That, that's something that Rogers really allowed us to do. And then just all the little things that make the customer experience better. As you, what, what is key in your view, Doug, the, the ultra competitive environment that you're in, uh, in, in terms of uh, being successful in this competitive marketplace? Just listening to our fans and making adjustments that make the fan experience better every year. That's really what it has to be. And the fans have to know we're listening to them. We want them to have a great experience. And when there are challenges, we want them to let us know. We had some traffic challenges last year. We worked with local police and the state police. I think our traffic's gonna be much better this year. Got to remember, though, you put 330,000 people in one venue at the same time and then have them leave at the same time, you're always going to have a little bit of a traffic delay. Yeah. All right. Doug Bowles, the president of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Always great to see you, Doug. And uh, we're going to have you back a little bit later uh, in the show to talk about technology, innovation, such an important part of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, including driverless cars, how autonomous vehicles and autonomous race uh, could be part of the future here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. That's a little bit later in the show.